a tender, would you please consider giving generously um, that we can continue to do uh, more ministries for His kingdom? Uh, give generously, systematically, proportionally, joyfully as an expression of Lord's um, uh, stewardship in our lives so that we can exercise good stewardship and further God's kingdom and as we do uh, ministries for God. Um, you can easily give through Church Center app uh, on our website or text to give, or you can drop off a check uh, in the back of this room. All right? Let me pray for us. Father God, we thank you so much for that you ask us to um, seek your kingdom and your righteousness, <coughs> that we get to uh, seek your kingdom, we get to enjoy your kingdom, and we get to expand your kingdom through the ministries that we do. Father, thank you so much for your wonderful invitation that how you have called us out of darkness into light, from deadness to life, that we can experience this life and help pass on this life onto others as you are life to us. Thank you so much for our church. May we continue to do amazing ministries in furthering and expanding your kingdom. Use us mightily. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. As Peter was writing this letter to scattered Christians in Asia Minor, right? And he had this intent in mind that people were, the Christians were under a lot of pressure, a lot of difficulties, a lot of persecution. And he wanted to encourage them, right? And, and calling them and understanding, helping them to understand that they are the God's elect. They are called by God. Right? It's amazing fact and understanding that man, Almighty God, who created the whole universe, right, takes time and notices me, notices individuals, and calls them right, to become a children of God and to become a part of God's kingdom. Right? And that they experiencing life and for them to understand and even make sense of the difficulties that they're experiencing, right? First Peter talks about that they are in fire and through fire, they're getting cleansed. They're experiencing growth, right? And so, you know, it's kind of giving them, it is courage and an encouragement for them to know that Jesus is the one, was the one that who went into the fire, into the furnace so that we can experience the same thing, right? That Jesus has overcome and for us that we will overcome as follower of Jesus Christ. So it's not just all about, you know, thinking about us like, oh, how difficult that we're living in, how hard, right? The persecution that we may or may not face, but we have to look towards Jesus, you know, right? And focus our eyes on Jesus because Jesus was the one that who went into the furnace because even he didn't do anything wrong, right? For our sake that he went into the fire, right? To save us, right? To rescue us. Right? The, the, the fire that we were supposed to take, that Jesus took on our behalf. Right? And so Peter is uh, reminding these Christians right, that their life is not alone, right? that God notices them, God knows them. Right? And so for them to focus on Jesus. Right? So as we live in America today, yeah, there are some difficulties, maybe not like difficulties that these Bible times that they experience. Right? And so there is you know, a little bit of a, um, a possible persecutions that we do experience. You know, there's a secularism, right? And, and it's not just, I say these words, it's, it's you know, just to say it's bad things, right? But, but it's just understanding that they don't need God, right? They do their life a, apart from God. There's no necessity of salvation. We don't need to be saved. And this is understanding that they are suffice, right? Without God, without Jesus, right? They can just do their life, right? And then pluralism, in a way, kind of says that, like, all religions are very similar, 
right? They're all kind of same. Essentially, all religion leads, you know, leads to the kind of same destination. And, but we know it's not true because Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. In English, you can't really tell, but in Greek, right? Emphatically, Jesus is stating that I, only I am the way, only I am the truth, only I am the life, and no one else, right? And so we have to really understand that. And so, you know, for them to say all religions are same, they really don't know what they're talking about. Right? But even when you look at the, you know, each group of religions, right? They themselves will say, oh yeah, we're very different than these other, you know, religious groups. Right? So people who are into religion, right? And so they know that we're very different than Buddhism and, and right, Islam and all different kinds of religions. So we have to know that, that they are very, very different. Right? And, and this pluralism and secularism says that, oh, there's no absolute truth or there's no central truth, right? All truth is relative in the name of tolerance. People tolerate, tolerate every kind of religion. And people think that all religions are equally valid. And we know that's not true, right? And I think for, you know, from non-religious people trying to make all religions same, right, they use this kind of illustration, right? They say all religions are trying to describe a, a big elephant in some sense, right? And then they're all blindfolded, right? And, and some groups will say near the uh, legs, you know, because it's like, oh, that, you know, this religion is like a trunk, you know, this God they're trying to explain is like a big trunk and it's like a so stable and so, so, you know, whatever, right? And this other group are near the elephant trunk and, you know, the nose trunk, right? And say, like, oh, it's kind of like a hose-like and it's flexible and, you know, kind of makes a little sound like <laughs> and stuff like that, right? And maybe some other religions are, you know, near the tail and like, a, oh, it's a little bit skinnier, you know, kind of thing, but it has a little hair in the, in the end and, you know, they're trying to explain these things that, and to say every religions are blindfolded and they're trying to explain this, this God figure, right? But then when you look at that, you got to ask the same question to them and say, hey, who gave you the freedom that you get to see that everybody else is blindfolded? What's so special about you, right? They have to right, put themselves under the you know, like same scrutiny that they're saying, they should be blindfolded too. <laughs> right? Who gave them the sight and everybody else blindfolded? Right? It's not fair. Right? But then that's the same thing for us to understand that like the, the system that God has made, right? In his holiness, in his perfection, right? And this universe that God has created, right? Right? And that the wage of sin is a separation from God and how God has made a way in the system that he has created in order for us to be cleansed from our sins, right? So that we can be included in the kingdom of God. God is not, right? he's, like, he's like saying that I am holy, I am just, and this universe that I have made, right? And there is a problem and I am providing a solution within the system that I have made in order for us people to be cleansed and people to be coming, right, included in the kingdom once again, right? And so I think we have to really understand then how other religions explain themselves as well, right? So people think that they are essentially good. Some people think that. They, they don't need to be saved. And you ask them like, hey, you know, if you believe in heaven and hell, uh, you know, do you think you're going to go to heaven or do you, gonna, do you think you're going to go to hell when you die, right? And most people will say they're going to go to heaven. Do you remember that? I told you a story like, they, you know, if you're a thousand people and two thousand people, they ask them like, oh, how many of you guys believe in heaven and hell? And like 90% of people, they say, oh, I believe in heaven and hell. And they said, they gave him like a famous 20 people of their history, right? Mother Teresa, like Gandhi, and like famous good people, right? And, and Mother Teresa became like the number one person. And 79% of people thought that Mother Teresa is going to go to heaven. Oh, oh, let me take that back. It's not, you know, Mother Teresa was number one, right? They thought, right? The people themselves thought that they were going to go to heaven. That was like 89%. So in a way, they thought they were better than Mother Teresa. Of course, right? In their own system. Like, they draw the right behind them. Like, I make it. Anybody behind me, you won't make it. 
right? People think that they lived a decent life, right? We haven't done really, really bad things. Even though if we have done bad things, right? We're like, oh, you know, surely, you know, all the good things that I've done, it kind of cancels out all the bad things, right? If before I came to church, same thing, right? How do I know I'm going to go to heaven, right? And when I die, all the bad things, like, you know, there's like a scale on this side and all the good things on this side, you kind of weigh it out and there's more good things that you have done, then you go to heaven. And, and you have more bad things that you have done, then, then you won't go to heaven. You go to hell, right? In that kind of sense, right? And I think we have to really understand, right, that, that gospel tells us no, you know, the, 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 the system of Christianity or the God's word uh, challenges us that kind of thinking in our world, right? And so people think all these things. Salvation is not necessary. I don't need to be saved. I am good enough, right? And there is no central truth or absolute truth. All religions are essentially all the same, right? And But as we know, in Church of Jesus Christ, right, we are not a, a social organization, God has given us this gospel for us to, to live and to promote and to proclaim and to expand God's kingdom, to seek his kingdom, it's his righteousness, right? And when we are to live in courage, right? In, in boldness, in humility and love, right? And, and the purpose that God has given us, right? To, to enjoy this life and also to promote this life. The greatest gift that we have received is salvation, right? And how that changes us how that changes how we think, right? How it motivates us differently, right? And it also challenges us the, the purpose that God has given us. And we need to learn how to proclaim, right? And Bible says that men of Issachar knew the time and they knew what to do, right? And we need to know what time they were living in. Right? I'm, not, I'm not talking about just 1020, but what's the, what's the people's thought? What, what's their understanding, Right? And so that we can, you know, communicate to them better. We can help them to understand the gospel better. Help them to know the need of the right, gospel better. All right? So we need, to, we need to learn that. Right? Every generation needs to learn how we can share the gospel to our friends and our family members and our neighbors and co-workers and, and everyone around us. Right? Right, 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 right Irvin? Right? God has given us what? Ministry of reconciliation. Amen? Yeah, not just for Irvin, but just all Christians. You know, as a child of God, it's not just, okay, I'm saved, I'm just going to go to heaven. No, it's just the beginning. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile people to God as Christ right, became the sacrificial lamb for us. Right? So as we read... Um, 1 Peter 3, 4, and 5, right? I want you to think about it. Okay, how are we to right, live as a kingdom people, enduring the difficulties right, and persecution? And what do we need to do? Right? And, right, so let me, you read the verse 3, I read verse 4, then you read verse 5, then it was rotate. All right? Ready, go. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. There's some benefit of reading it super fast. But sometimes when you look at it, man, there's a lot of words, right? Lots of powerful and packed words. Right in this short passage, there's a lot of stuff in here, right? And so there's a benefit of reading it fast, but also there's a benefit of reading it kind of slow and really looking at in depth. And sometimes what helps us to look at it like a block diagram, right? We call it like a kind of block diagram. I think different people call it differently. And let's kind of break this apart of, you know, in the beginning it says, praise to be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And why is Paul encouraging people to praise God, right? And so when you look at that, it's because God has given us new life, right? And so that's why you see this indentation, and, uh, and that's how you kind of do it. So this is the kind of the main part, 
Oh my, it's kind of cold. My hands are like shaking. Yeah. And, and so this is a kind of, a, is how it is indented like a little bit less, right? Like, or a little bit, like one, one step over. So we praise God for He has given us this new life. And this new life is given about, about this one. I can't even write one well. Yeah. In His great mercy, God has given us new life and into a living hope, right? And also, and unto, into an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade, right? So you can kind of see that, oh, yeah, we ought to praise God for this new birth, that we are a new being, a new life that God has given us, and He has given us new life because of His great mercy, right? And He has given us this into this living hope. Right? And I'm going to explain to you. Right? So this block diagram, it helps us a little bit. Right? And first of all, we know that God exists in Trinity. Right? We looked at that last week and how the work of salvation is, you know, is, is work of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Right? They're all three part of the Trinity is at work. Right? It's amazing work that God has done that, right? And also, the Trinity is serves us as a model for us, for all the relationships, all the social structures that we have. It comes from the Trinity, right? Even a church structure, even a family structure, right? God, you know, father, mother, and children, right? You know, Christ is the head of the church, and there's leaders, and there's people, right? God has, you know, modeled after Trinity for all the relationships that we have. And so we're grateful. So we, whenever you have a question about how we ought to function, you look at the Trinity, right? And how it functions in Trinity and how we get to apply in the ways that we live, right? So in the ways that we obey, in the ways that we serve, in the ways that we honor, in the ways that we love, right? And so He serves us in how we do the life that, you know, in the relationship that God has given us, right? So Peter is saying that we praise God for this new birth, right? Right? He's so excited and he, he thanks God for this new birth, this salvation that he has given us. And like I said, you know, some generations or even our current generation, people may say, I don't need to be saved. Right? There's no imminent danger that I need to save from. And that's what salvation means, right? There's this grave danger, you know, that God has saved us from. But this, this generation doesn't believe that there is a grave danger. Right? Maybe most people will, will believe that, hey, if we don't even hear the gospel, we'll just automatically go to heaven. You know, maybe like universalism or something, right? We're naturally good people anyway. Maybe you will go to heaven. We may think like that. But what if you're wrong? Yeah, right? And that would be really bad news when you get there. Right? If nobody shared the good news with us, and it would be really bad for us to, you know, like maybe you went to church all your life. Right? And never got to hear the gospel, never got to respond to the gospel. And you, you never knew that there was a bad news that we are, right, from the beginning separated from God. If we don't respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'll go to hell. Right? If you never knew that, and that will be a bad news. And we, in a way, we'll be all responsible because we didn't share that good news with that person. The right, book of Ezekiel kind of talks about it. It's, it's in our, the blood is in our hands. It's kind of like scary thing, right? And so for us to understand that, yeah, there's like John 3, 3, 16 tells us, right? Whoever believes in him shall not perish. So by our, our natural, right, natural um, path of life and the destination without hearing the gospel and responding to the gospel is perishing because of our sin, Right? Because of our separation of God due to Adam's sin and our sin. And the Bible says the wage of sin is death. Separation from God. Right? Adam and Eve, they sinned. What happened? They got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Right? And that's for all of us as well. And Jesus said the same thing, right? He said no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Right? Born again means that you start over again. Right? It doesn't matter the foundation you have begun. Right? But as we understand the kingdom principles, right? The spiritual things that you must recognize, man, I have to start all over again 
right? From like infant, from like zero years old or zero month and zero day, how you start over again, how we are to live in the kingdom of God, right? And so this understanding of sin and, in, you know, of course, talking about sin is not very popular. Who wants to talk about the bad things, right? But, but you know, as I get older, I'm 54 years old, right? I went to get my annual checkup the other day. Actually, I'm going there tomorrow, but then I got my blood test done and, you know, I, you know the blood test result, they email you and you look at it and I just look at the red spots, right? And because then, you know, red means it's kind of no good. Like, oh, I'm deficient at this. Man, my, I have a high cholesterol and like all these things like, oh no, right? And if you don't know it, what happened? Like, you're just gonna, you think everything's fine. No, you need to know what is wrong with us. Right? So who can make some corrective right, decisions and actions so that things can be corrected, can be corrected. Right? And the same thing for us. And we need to know, like, where is my life going wrong? What is the issue? Right? And all points back to sin. We have missed the mark. We don't understand God. We don't have power to do the right things. We really don't. Right? We know salad is good for you. We know the red meat is not good for you, but man, that juicy steak is like, it's, 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 it's calling my name. <laughs> Even I, I didn't grow up with, with meat. I didn't eat any meat until like I was 18 years old. You know, maybe a little bit of it, but very, very little. I didn't like meat, but man, now it's like, it's, it's, it's a different story, right? Yeah. And you, you know, it's things, we don't have power to say no to the things that you should say no to. We don't have power to say yes and do the things that we should say yes to, right? Yeah. And so we have to, you know, be born again. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole process and, and endurance, right? And, and, and continuing the faith is work of God. We have to rely on God. And that's why, you know, John 15, 5 says, apart from me, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing, Right? Right? Even, even the way that God holds on to us is God's strength kind of coming inside of us and working in us as well. Right? So that's why it's, it is all grace. We don't earn anything, right? You know, it's grace of God. It's a free gift that God has given us, the salvation, this new life that God has given us. That's why we praise God. It wasn't our works. It wasn't our doing. And sometimes we even think like, oh, yeah, you know, I happened to go to church this day and, you know, and, and, and I heard the message and I responded. Yes, there is personal responsibility, but we have to understand that's work of God. God who gave us that desire to go. God gave us the strength for us to wake up and come to church and to hear and to respond right, to the message of Christ. Right? It's the grace of God. We have to understand, right, that God is at work, that God gives us strength, that God gives us even understanding right, and strength for to us to respond. It is grace, right? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is gift of God. Uh, gift means it's free, right? Gift means that it's, we have to take it, and we have to enjoy it, and we have to use it, Right? Not by work so that no one can boast. Right? We boast in Christ. We boast in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Right? Not us. Yes, there is our part. But there is much more of God's part rather than just our part. And also the Bible says that right, it's because of His great mercy. Many mercies of God. Right? His mercy is not just a one-time thing. It continues to be displayed in Christ and right in, in the Holy Spirit to our lives and right and somebody explained to me this mercy is not getting what we deserve, right? We deserve something, but you know uh, God is taking us that that what we deserve away from us and how He has given us given that to Christ to Jesus. We deserve to die on the cross, but how Jesus came and He went to the cross on our behalf. Isn't that the great news? Yeah. The penalty that I deserve to pay, right? Jesus came and took that penalty on our behalf for me, right? The, the debt that I owed, I couldn't pay, but how Jesus came and he paid for me, you know? And I have the receipt for that, which is the cross. Yeah. 
and 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 grace is you know um, uh, that we don't deserve to get it, but God gives us that, right? And that's the grace part of it. And and you know Romans twelve, this concept of understanding right God's mercy and responding to God's mercy as how we ought to do, knowing God's great love. Right? And that's why Romans 12, right? That Paul explains the gospel. And God, Paul explains the, you know, how God has special plan for the, the Jewish nation, right? The Israelites. And he says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, right? In the ways that God has taken away what we deserve, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. You know, this is all relationship. It's not like do's and don'ts, but it's understanding how God had great mercy on us. And after you experience that, this great mercy that God has displayed for us, then how do we respond to that? Right? When somebody shows you great mercy and great grace, what do you do? At least you say thank you. Right? You learned that in kindergarten. <laughs> right? Even those little kids that we, we try to raise and, you know, I mean, we teach them. Okay, say thank you. Say please, right? But man, when they say thank you voluntarily, doesn't that melt your heart? I said, like, wow, we have done well. <laughs> you know? Praise our God does exist. You know? <laughs> right? This boy can learn or this girl can learn, right? right? It's an amazing thing. Right? That's why we, we understand like this mercy and this grace that God has given to them. We respond. To God, knowing that, man, I don't have what it takes to do life. But how I must offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. And the Bible said, this is your true and proper worship. Worship is not just coming and singing some songs and listening to some guy and going back home. No, it's really literally for you to understand God's mercy and offering your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's worship. We come together and to understand what Jesus has done on the cross and we respond to that by giving our lives as a living sacrifice to God and saying that this is not my life anymore. This is not my will. This is not my time. This is not my treasure. It's God's time. It's God's treasure. It's God's life. Then we must use it for his kingdom and his righteousness and his glory. That's what worship is. Right? Right? Uh, in Revelations 4, then these elders, they had these crowns and they come and they worship. And what did they do after they worship? They cast their crown to God. You know, how do you know that you really worship and what you haven't worshiped? And after when worship service is done, are you offering your crown before Jesus Christ or not? If you haven't worshiped, you still have the crown. If you have worship, you cast your crown to Jesus. That's how you can tell you have really worshipped or you have not worshipped. It's in the Bible. <laughs> can't argue that. You understand, you understand what I'm saying? Same thing for me. Just because I can say these things, am I actually doing that? Am I really recognizing it is God's time? It is God's life? Or is it just my life and I can just make it seem like that it is God's life? Yeah. Right? And for just like for all of us. Right? And, and this, this salvation that God gives us, it becomes, it gives us a living hope, right? Living hope is not just positive thinking. Oh, tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will be better, right? Tomorrow will be better than today, right? That's, that's just a positive thinking or, or, you know, like, or, or, or trying to, you know, think yourself out and stuff like that. But this living hope, right, in, in biblical sense is that it's a knowing of certainty of based on God's faithfulness, Right? And God's promises that, that we know for sure like that tomorrow is going to be better than today. I'm not talking about just tomorrow as a, you know, June 26th. We're talking about eternity's sake. Right? Yes, they are going through the persecution and difficulties. Right? And about that, they don't live things that is going to perish. They live for the things that it will be eternal. It will be heaven. Right? That it will be the kingdom of God that it will endure forever. Right? So it's based on God's promises and based on God's faithfulness in what he did on Jesus. Just can you imagine some guy just saying, making a promise or making a statement, say, hey, you know what, guys? I'm going to die. 
They're going to crucify me, but on the third day, I'm going to rise. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's what, you know, this apostle didn't believe in me. You know? they didn't, they didn't, like, no, you know, that, that's, nobody has done that before. Right? But after resurrection, what did they do? Right? Jesus spent time with them for 40 days. Right? 40 days has very significant like, timeline, right? It's like a surely time. It's a completed time. We're spending time with disciples and, and non-Christians or Christians, right? And, and in a way, proving to them that Jesus is alive. It's not just a fluke. It's not just Jesus like, came back alive for a little bit and went died again, you know, which we do experience once in a while, right? People may be gone and they come back up and right? maybe a little bit later they will go again, right? Maybe it could be years or whatever, Right? But then this complete time of 40 days, and Jesus says that, well, you know, Paul says, you know, he appeared to many people, including like 500 people at once. Yeah, right? Those of you who were at the wedding yesterday, you know they got married. <laughs> and there was not even 500 people. <laughs> right? You know, something happened. Like, yeah, there was a lot of food, and, you know, and, like, there was some stuff, and pictures, and dancing, and, and things like that. Something did happen, right? Yeah, and just like that, Jesus appeared to many different people, right? And knowing that, right, that Jesus, who died and who rose again, right, he, he defeated death, right? Yeah, he conquered death, that, which is the problem for all mankind, right? That he defeated death and that surely we will follow Jesus, that we will one day rise again as well. That is a living hope that we have. Amen? Yeah, that we'll live forever. Some of you guys, if life sucks, like, I don't want to live forever. Right? And we're not talking about that kind of quality, right? We're talking about God's quality of life that we get to live forever and ever and ever. Where's no tear, right? That Jesus wipe away our tear, right? Just singing in joy and glory of God and enjoying His presence forever and ever. Right? Just like the, all the miracles that Jesus had done, uh, the wedding, all right, the wedding at the canon, and, you know, people getting healed, and that kind of excitement that it will continue on and on forever. Just think about that, right? The glory after glory that we get to experience. Yeah, it's an amazing thing that we want to, and that's why the First Corinthians 15 was all written, because people did not believe that we will be resurrected. Right? And that give us the, even the, what gospel means. Right? That Jesus rose again. Therefore, we will rise again as well. We will follow Jesus. Amen? Uh, one day that he will right, come again and give us this new body. How Jesus was walk, you know, able to walk through the walls. Yeah, it's not like a speed of light. It's speed of mind in some sense. Like, bam, you know? Like, wow, that'd be pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Tele, whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah, we get to experience all that, right? And it'll be really, really cool. Yeah? And so what, what gives us is that not just the living hope, but it gives us this inheritance, you know, that we'll receive. And that literally is just heaven. And it will not perish it will not spoil and it will not fade away. All the things that we receive and we experience in this life, it perish, it spoils, and it fades. Yeah. Even some of the shirt that I have, I really like is Nike and like and you know, I had it for like five years and some of that, and, and I'd be washing my clothes and, and, and folding clothes and like top of it is like it's not the same color anymore. Because it's like right direct under, under the California sun, right? And he kind of fades away. Like, what kind of shirt is this? Okay, give to AJ. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like it fades. Color fades. Even it's Nike. You know, it's not even a fake one, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Like, I mean, Nike should make better stuff than this, right? And it fades. Even, even like all the new stuff, even our sanctuary is pretty new, right? But it does not last forever and ever. You know, there's problems, right? Things will fall apart, right? Things will perish. Even this body, man, when I was young, man, I, I, I was a pretty good athlete. I played soccer, played tennis, and you know, all these things. Man, man, now, man, when I be sitting down a little bit, I need to get up, like, definitely. Sometimes it's like, a, you know, evolution thing, right? You, you walk like this. <laughs> it takes a while for your body to catch up, you know? 
Yeah, and I was playing with some of the kids on Friday and, you know, with Cassandra and Daniel and Luke in the parking lot. And they said, oh, you know, catch me. You know, like, oh, I, I catch them. You know, I'm, I'm bigger than them. As well. I caught them three times and I was huffing and puffing. You know, like, I need a rest, you know. And Cassandra so cute. Oh, then you sit down here and you rest, okay? I'm like, oh, so sweet, you know. You know, some, some kids would say, no, you don't rest. You still play with me. But she was so sweet, and she let me rest a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Our body, our, our cars, our houses, right? And it, it will all decay, and it will all spoil. The food that we enjoy, yeah, you don't just leave, even if you leave it in the refrigerator, it will spoil too. It will slow down a little bit, right? The clothes, even fame, right? It passes away. I know some of you guys want to be super famous, or even like a little bit famous in your household, right? It will fade, fade away. How many of you guys remember who won the Super Bowl last year? Some of them, who? Who won? Chiefs, yeah. <laughs> who won a year ago or that? Chiefs, I just said Chiefs, you know, everybody, uh, Chiefs, you know, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and you might be right, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was L.A., actually, I, I, because I wrote it down, you know. Yeah. And before that, it was uh, Tampa Bay, right? You know, so like nobody remembers, right? Or maybe Chris Jose, you know, he's a <laughs> Super Bowl party at his house, you know. Yeah, right? And it, but even like, a, I like soccer, you know, who won the, the World Cup like four years ago, even like 16 years ago. Nobody remembers. Yeah, but we know whose kingdom will last forever and ever. Amen? Yeah, and his kingdom will not perish, will not spoil, and will not fade away. And that's why the Bible tells us, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and their thieves do not break in and steal. For there your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. This verse spoke to me this week. Because, you know, we have cameras everywhere. And I think maybe with, by permission, somebody came and took our firewood a little bit. This, this, this toilet, uh, the Honda CRV pulled up. And like four ladies came out. And I don't recognize them as our church members, you know. And they just walked around a little bit. I don't know why, how they found it. They, they, they start loading the wood, firewood you know, and in their car and just took off. You're like, whoa, you know, that's a new. But you know what, Lord? You know, we just bless them. <laughs> Hopefully they'll have a great time in their barbecue or whatever they're doing with the fire. You know, don't burn them down, Lord. <laughs> uh, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing, you know. <laughs> yeah, just like, you know. We, we receive them freely, we give them freely, right? 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 You know, but, but it's kind of funny, right? But that's why the, this heaven is kept for us. You know, it's God's power to preserve, right? It's for us, right? It's for God's kingdom, but it's for us, and He loves us, right? This relationship is hard to describe, but God loves us, and He for us that He's preserving, right? This heaven for us to, for us to look forward to, Right? That through faith, through trust, through relying on Him and His promises, that know that God's will be done. Amen? And that is the thing. And so when you look at compared to any other religion, as I was talking about from the beginning, right? You know, uh, for example, Buddhism, it's very fatalistic, right? There's no end. It's a reincarnation, reincarnation, reincarnation. It's like, oh, where is it going to end? There was a beginning, there should be a, some kind of end, right? But our Christianity has an end. I'm not saying it's, it's bad, but what I'm saying is that there has to be an end. The beginning God created, and there will be an end. And God's will will be done. So our response is what? We trust, and we persevere, right? We have faith in the ways that what God has said, and based on what, how He has kept His promises, especially in His death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, th that's, why our, that's our emblem, the cross of how he came, right? And then, then we get this understanding of the, until the coming of the salvation. Then some of you guys ask, like, what do you mean coming of our salvation? I thought we were already saved, right? right? But then right here, I told you the word salvation in New Testament is used one third times. Listen carefully. One third times how we begin our relationship with God. And one-third times how we continue to be in relationship with God, 
right? And another third, one third is this final salvation when Jesus comes back and where everything will be restored and renewed, right? So, right, so this salvation right here is talking about this future salvation, not the present salvation or the past salvation. So this is a three aspects of salvation. So just because you, like in some 20 years ago, some, somehow you respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ and yes to Jesus, and you have forgotten about him, right? All these times, you know, you can only say, I was one third saved. <laughs> I wasn't fully saved in some sense, right? right? So we got to, this is relationship, like I said last week. Yeah, salvation is relationship with God. Continual relationship with God, right? And the final day that we rely on God fully, right? So there's three aspects of salvation that we were saved Right? I, I, I was saved, and I am being saved, and I will be saved. And here is talking about this future, right? That how we will be delivered from the presence of sin, right? When we were saved, right? we are delivered from the penalty of sin because Jesus took that penalty on our behalf. And as we grow, right, that we are overcoming, right, experiencing victory over the practice and the power of sin, Right? And that's how we need to live today, that we are being saved. And that gives us testimonies for us to right, this experience the victory and share the victory, how God continuously changes and transforms our lives. Even through, right? And, and not just even, uh, as we get together and to worship put our minds and focuses our, our directions and our heart towards God. Right? And, and that shows us like this diagonal of Jesus, right? In the beginning was the Word, right? He was with God and how He came as a flesh, right? Made His dwelling among us. And First Peter says that He died for our sins, right? He, he, he ascended, He rose again, right? He ascended and He, in Romans 8, 34, talks about that He intercedes for us. He still have this ministry of right, right, you know, uh, intercession for our behalf. And Matthew 24 says he will come back. Then will appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You know, Bible says like a thief at night. Nobody knows, not even the sun. Right? So God works to bring about this. So what's our response? Our response is to make sure that you are born again. I had a privilege to meet up with Andrew. Andrew, this is his last Sunday. Yeah, he came to um, our church maybe about a month ago. Yeah, and uh, his brothers got saved and uh, told them to go to church. And he lives like maybe 10 houses up the street and, you know, he came and we put him to work, uh, fixing our pavers and <laughs> stuff like that. And, you know, and he responds to the gospel. He said yes to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Right? And, you know, we're, we're a little bit sad that he's going to leave th this coming Saturday to Sacramento. Right? But, but we continue to pray for him. You know, he needs to continue to respond to God and, and go to church and to grow and to read the Bible. Amen? Did you read this week? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know? And pray and, right? and grow right? and, and be renewed in the ways that God speaks to us. And, and right? uh, opening our eyes in the kingdom minded and, and the, the way of Jesus Christ and spiritual, right? the ways of understanding and applying. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're born again. You know? And so, so one of the signs is that this living hope that we have. We don't only live for the things that we see, right? And Jesus says, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. That Jesus' mission becomes our mission. I'm, I'm so serious about that. Yeah. And we must have this outlet, this ministry of reconciliation that God gives us people so that we can share God's love with, right? And God's good news of Jesus Christ with. And that's why I said like maybe eight weeks ago, right? Most people, most important people in our church is the VIPs, the people who do not know Christ. You know, we want to fill all this empty seat with people who like Andrew, people who do not know Jesus Christ, 
right? And now it's, it's my job? Yes, it's your job, all of our job, right? Connecting with our friends and our coworkers, right? And just neighbor people and just whoever people that you run into so that they can experience the salvation, the great salvation that how God came, right? In Jesus to die for our sins so that we can be included in God's kingdom, right? And so we praise God for the salvation. We appreciate that. We accentuate that. We look at Jesus 99 times, right? 199 times, whatever times that you look at. Yes, we fail. Yes, we have some successes, right? But we continue to look at Jesus Christ. We continue to lift up his name above every other name, every other things that we do. Yeah, we want to be gospel-centered. We want to live under the conviction of what Jesus has done. And we want that news to come out, right? not just in our mouths, but in our lives. Right? We want the gospel to come out in our lives. Yeah? And so we must experience living hope. Yes, this world is crazy. This world is very dark. It is decaying. Right? The, the things that we hear is, is like uh, going so fast and so many different changes, right? But we have a living hope. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Our life is, is secure, right? That God's power keeps the heaven for us, for us to be focused on, for us to know. But that doesn't mean that we're earthly no good. Just looking at the heaven, focusing on the heaven that we must be earthly good that we can be all about expanding God's kingdom, thinking about his righteousness, right? And, and loving him and being loved by him and growing in him so that we can understand more of his heart, grow in more of his understanding, right? That when we go to heaven and we can really understand, right? God's heart way more than, right? If we didn't get involved with God's things. And it's a blessing, right? It, we get to, experience this it is grace amen it's not you didn't earn this thing right? and so more and more people need to be excited about this good news that we can praise god that god has given this great news this good news is should be way better news than your son and daughter getting accepted at stanford for free full scholarship compared to that going to heaven is ten thousand times better amen Stand what? Stand what? Uh, you know, we don't know that. Like, you go to heaven, like, where'd you graduate from? Like, oh, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Cal Poly, Cal, oh, you mean, oh, you mean Cal Tech? You know, like, no, no, no. Yeah, right? Right? God's citizen people, that is the best news ever that we get to not be part of that and grow in that. So make sure that you are born again. Yeah? And check with one another. Yeah, yes, we have friends, but yes, that's okay. You know, and, but make sure that your friends are saved to, for them to know if they're saved or not saved, right? And so make sure they don't live in praise, being grateful for that God has grace upon them and given them salvation, right? And yes, the life is hard, right? But our focus and our hope is not this world, not earning seven figure, right? not earning having a stock option or stock option or whatever option that you have, right? But our the hope is our living hope in heaven that we get to be with God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Right. Right. God is good. God. Don't we sing that? Amen. Yeah. And that kind of God, we're going to be with God forever and ever. And that's, we need God, right? God who began a good work in us. He will continue it and he will complete it. Even this work of salvation is his work. He has begun it and he will complete it. Yeah. Let's all rise and you know, sing our last song as you are reminded how much we need God. As he has begun this good work of salvation and he will complete it.